I'm Jilda Healy, and I'm from Middletown, New Jersey. And on September 11th, 2001, I worked in Tower 2 on the 36th floor. September 11th, uh, 2001, I was the first assistant prosecutor in Monmouth County. And uh, my boss, John Kay, was out of the country. So I was the top law enforcement officer for Monmouth County on September 11th, 2001. I remember going to work kind of a little early that day because it was such a beautiful day, beautiful blue sky, gorgeous morning. I just thought, oh, what a beautiful day this is. I left the house, I said goodbye to my husband, and I said, I'll see you tonight after school. I walked into the office like I did every other day. The next thing I know, I stood up at my desk and I saw an airplane go through the Tower One building right from where I was sitting. I was a sergeant on the emergency services unit for our department and we had a uh, nine o'clock supervisors meeting scheduled in the conference room. And I remember the chief secretary received a phone call about a plane crashing into one of the World Trade Centers. And at that time we thought it was some kind of aviation uh, accident. Shortly after I got to my desk, my secretary came in and said that a plane had hit one of the towers of the World Trade Center. And I, like most people, thought that it was probably just a small plane and just an accident. The uh, World Trade Center are clearly visible from our shoreline here. It's always been a, a staple in the landscape. We had a lot of residents that worked in Lower Manhattan. For the amount of people that would commute into Manhattan, you know, our ridership was a relatively small number. And these were daily commuters, people that commuted with us for many years or many days. We knew, I would say, probably 99% of the riders on a first name basis, and they knew who we were on a first name basis. Our 6 a.m. departure into the city, we had no indication that, you know, that anything was about to unfold that day. Somewhere along the way, there was news of a small plane um, crashing into one of, the, one of the Twin Towers. Nobody was overly concerned about it. The next thing I know, I heard a, one of the supervisors from one of the other divisions come running over to us, and he told my boss, you know, Barbara, the other building was hit by an airplane, and we should get out of here because there could be a fire. And with that, she grabbed her pocketbook, come running out of her office and said, everybody out now. I picked up my pocketbook and went right down the stairs behind her. Didn't give it a second thought. And it wasn't until we were transiting back to New Jersey after that departure when we witnessed the second plane crash into the building. I stopped the vessel at that point. We just, we were in shock, you know, about what we had just witnessed. We determined at that point that we were under attack. I told the passengers on board that I was going to take them back to New Jersey. And so we transported those passengers back to New Jersey, and then we turned the vessel around to go back into the city. You know, we didn't know what was going on at that point, but we knew that we had people in the city that are going to be looking to get out. Getting off the island via vessel was the only way to, to get out of Manhattan. At that point, I immediately got on the phone with my chief of detectives and asked him to contact the FBI to see whether or not they were aware of any targets, potential targets, in Monmouth County. As soon as I hung up the phone with the chief of my detectives, the phone rang and it was the commander of Fort Monmouth. And he asked for our assistance in providing security around Fort Monmouth. He also advised that the United States military had gone to DEFCON 4 which was, at that time, the highest military alert. For reasons that most of us in this country do not fully comprehend and perhaps never will, on September 11th, 2001, there was a concerted terrorist attack on this country. 19 hijackers from various countries hijacked four 
jet airplanes filled with people, with flight crews, pilots, flight attendants, people going on vacation. And the hijackers took control of the airplanes with um, simple weapons, box cutters. They had trained to fly a plane. They never trained how to land a plane because they had no intention of safely landing a plane. Two of the planes were flown into the World Trade Center, one into the North Tower, one into the South Tower. It was one concerted hijacking that had so many uh, ripple effects across the country and across the, the world. law enforcement and fire and EMS, everyone being called in to work, regardless of whether you're working or not, the mobilization that was occurring behind the scenes for first responders here in the county and all over. We were contacted immediately after the plane struck the World Trade Center. We were detailed down to Atlantic Highlands and Highlands to the ferry terminals uh, with Sea Street. We embarked from the ferry terminal in Highlands, uh, about 25 police officers on the top deck, and we were going across, and uh, you could see the smoke billowing from the site of the World Trade Center at Ground Zero. Uh, and I remember at one point we passed uh, another boat returning to New Jersey with evacuees. Commuters on the ferry coming back, uh, standing on the upper deck, many of them weeping, uh, consoling one another. And as we passed close to one another and they recognized that it was police officers and rescue workers going into the city, they uh, applauded and waved and clapped. And it was uh, powerfully emotional for, for uh, the police officers and the uh, evacuees. Everybody was coming back to the vessel, I mean, essentially in shock. I could not be more thankful, obviously, to, to see our boat at that pier. And for the commuters that we were taking in, we had a set schedule, but they didn't know when these vessels would be arriving. And we really didn't have any way of communicating to the passengers. People were just showing up at the dock, and as they were coming, we were just loading them up until we reached capacity and then heading back to New Jersey. The first trip in, buildings were still standing at that point. We really weren't dealing with any injured passengers coming in. Um, but then there weren't enough boats to get the people off fast enough, so a lot of people were still in the vicinity when the buildings collapsed. At one point, when we were returning back into Manhattan, we were pulling in through a, a dust cloud. You know, I would relate it to going in on a foggy day with zero visibility because that's basically what we had with the amount of dust, you know, navigating the vessels into the pier on radar. There were no, no health concerns. I mean, the thought was that it's most likely bad what we're breathing in, but we need to get these people out of, out of the city. Actually, people came off and we just hosed them down with their clothes. We were concerned about the fact that the terrorists may have used either chemical or biological agents in their attacks. We were also getting teletypes of missing person reports. Families in Monmouth County who were unable to reach their loved ones. And in some cases, you know, I was able to assist them in contacting their relatives and let them know that they were safe. And then there were other individuals, you know, in my community that I was asked to help and I could not help them because they were lost that day. I specifically remember um, an assistant prosecutor coming into the office and say, asking, hey, Bob, do you think it's okay if I could leave? And I said, yeah, what's the matter? He said, my nephew was in the North Tower. And I looked at him and he looked at me and we both knew that he was never coming home. And he died that day. When the attacks occurred on 9-11, I was a certified paramedic working in EMS. I was a, a police officer working for Tom's River Police. I was a volunteer firefighter in my community. The morning I was doing shift work and I was at home with my wife. Her brother, my brother-in-law, was in one of the towers. Uh, survived, uh, but, you know, was at work uh, when it had occurred. My husband was on the 105th floor of the North Tower. He had walked down in the bombing in 1993 from the same offices. And so this was my second experience with terrorism in the same way. And in the first one, 
There was no smoke outside of any of the buildings, but when he got home, he was covered in soot. So the second time when I saw the black billowing smoke flowing out and over those floors, I knew they were gone. We were advised to expect multiple victims coming from the World Trade Center. We were advised that we were to expect us to create a temporary morgue on Sandy Hook. We asked Sea Streak Ferry to strip down one of their ferries in anticipation that we would be carrying bodies out of the World Trade Center debris. But that never happened. If you did not walk out of there that day, you did not come home. And if you ever go out to the ferry stations, there's big parking lots. And those parking lots are usually filled with cars of the commuters that go into them. And with each passing hour, you would see that a number of cars would leave the parking lot. By three or four in the morning, the parking lot was still filled with cars. And we all knew at that point that individuals whose cars were still in the parking lot probably were not coming home. I remember one um, young woman, you know, with like three kids in tow, just looking, 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 waiting as the ferries came in. When her husband did come, I think she feared the worst and she just started losing it. And that was typical of, of the day. And then there was also a lot of joyful reunions. So there were moments of joy as well. We all pulled together. One of the difficult situations that I had to face was dealing with the immediate response of first responders to go to ground zero. As chief law enforcement officer, I was concerned about keeping our resources here in Monmouth County. Law enforcement. EMS and fire services all wanted to go to New York City to help. We were contacted by New York City to slow down everybody from responding because they had to actually get things squared away on their own to get a, a unified response. And it was a difficult situation. I had very heated arguments with various chiefs of police and first responders about wanting to go to ground zero. The FBI was telling us that there may be additional attacks. Some battles I won, I've convinced some police chiefs and some first responders to stay, and other battles I lost that day. First responders just had that instinctive response to go and help. These pictures are from Monmouth County Prosecutor's Office detectives that went up there, responded to uh, uh, the World Trade Center. Joe Capriotti was the Middletown police officer who was in charge of informing the families that, that their loved ones were not gonna come home. And he passed away two years ago. He was dubbed the keeper of the list by the Middletown Township Police Department. Joe was called the keeper of the list because he had the names of the missing persons, he was always in close contact with the victims' families, and had the, uh, the, the heavy duty of notifying the families when remains were found in, in the years following 9-11. There was a significant impact in Monmouth County because we had 147 individuals who perished that day. The one thing about it is, even though you hear 147 people, times that 147 people, which is devastating in itself, and times that about all the people that are close to them, relatives, friends, family, there, what that impact was throughout the county. I think my life has always been and always will be defined as before and after 9-11. My husband was in uh, Tower One of the World Trade Center and he died that day. You know, someone like my husband simply went to work and because he was an American working in the financial world, which I think was emblematic of American capitalism. He was killed and taken from me and my children and uh, that heartache will never go away. I watched the towers uh, collapse. It was a shift 
for first responders. And I think only first responders can attest to that. It was a mindset shift about uh, what is your mission now as first responders? You know, what was menial tasks and answering, you know, nuisance calls now became heightened sense of alert, uh, joint terrorism task force, uh, equipment needed, communication centers that had to be put together. A lot of the equipment that you see that we have today is because of 9-11, including what you see here in our command center. This Monmouth County Sheriff's Office 911 and Command Center was as a direct result of post 9-11 reports about communications and how we respond to those types of emergencies. As we went along, um, you, you just started to feel like this is something that is history. This is something that none of us could have ever imagined happening. And we started to realize the impact to obviously our nation, but in our little bubble here in Monmouth County that the impact was devastating. We lost a lot of family members. Everyone knew someone uh, in the county that had lost uh, family members. Geographically, we're really close right, to these events. Um, if you look on a map, you can see right, Manhattan is just across the water. The smoke from Ground Zero blew into Monmouth County for weeks. Being so close, seeing the aftermath of 9-11, it was inescapable. People need a place to reflect. I think people need a place to remember. People need something tangible to, to have a quiet moment, to have a connection with the loved ones that were lost. There were so many towns that were impacted by residents who perished that day. So many of the towns in Monmouth County thought it very important and appropriate to create memorials within their towns. And we do have several throughout Monmouth County. Middletown has a, a phenomenal memorial garden. One of the most significant, of course, is the county memorial at Mount Mitchell. I went to Mount Mitchell for the first time. It was early evening, and the approach was just so beautiful. I just can't tell you how moving it was to come up the walkway and see this, this eagle and see the water behind it and the sun hitting the skyline of the city off in the distance. As you're walking along the pathway, they have the timeline of that day. I just felt so moved by it. And if you look straight in line with that walkway and the eagle, Behind it, you will see the World Trade Center, where all this happened. Henry Hudson first saw this site as a special site in 1609. Since then, people have always been drawn here from the entire county. It has always been special, and it is always also the best view of downtown Manhattan, at least in my opinion. And we've got to know some of the family members that were young teens or grammar school when their parents were killed. Often they will go up to the monument and what they'll do is they'll bow their heads a bit and they'll reach out and they'll touch the name of their family member. This is what they have. This is the memory they have of the event. They don't remember it like a lot of people might. The ties of the September 11th attacks and Middletown are very deep. You know, we, we lost more residents than any other town outside of, of New York City. Right down the street from where our September 11th memorial is, our World Trade Center Memorial Gardens, sits the Middletown train station. And the significance of that really is that the 37 people that lost their lives, many of their vehicles and, and modes of transportation remain there for so long. And, and now, you know, their memory sits right alongside those train tracks. It's been two decades and time is going to continue to pass. How I feel about it is it's a chapter in my story. My story didn't end there. I'm lucky that I was able to move on from the experience. We were overwhelmed by the love and kindness and grace that came pouring in in the moments after that and had still existed to this day. So to my experience in losing my husband, leaving me with three little kids, seven, four, and four months, 
Now looking back on it, all I can tell you is I'm here today stronger and better for having lived it because of the community I live in, because I've never been forgotten, because that's what I see when I hear never forget. I never forget the grace and the gratitude and the humility and the outpouring of love that has been showered on us and continues to be 20 years later. The silver lining, if there is one, is the love and the dedication to a person's community that came out of 9-11. If it weren't for them, some people may not have gone into the law enforcement profession. Some people may not have enlisted in the United States military. Because my husband was killed, people react differently to a tragedy in their life. And some people can't get out of bed, and others maybe do things that they never had done before. And for me, it was important to be active and to try to find a way to help my family and to help other 9-11 families. I worked on a tax legislation that benefited the families of 9-11. I was one of the women who worked on the Victims Compensation Fund, and I was at the forefront of the creation of the 9-11 Commission to find out how this happened and, more importantly, why we would hope something like this could never happen again. When I was first able to start to exhale a little bit, I, I realized that I wanted my life and my children's life to be a credit to my husband. And I knew he would want me to move on and to be strong and to do something that would help myself and my children and, and most importantly, to be able to help other family members. And for whatever reason, I was able to do that. When we talk about it being 20 years since 9-11, for some people that feels like a long time, but my students you know, weren't even born yet. And so we have to continue to inform people about what happened that day, not just only to honor the 147 that we lost, right? And the heroic and resilient actions of the people of Monmouth County in the tragedy's aftermath, but also so that we continue to seek to understand our place in the world um, and what it is and what it should be going forward. It's the, the mission of the Monmouth County Historical Association to collect and preserve items that tell the story of the history of the county. And we have done so for the story of 9-11. History is a living thing. And so that will be an archive that remains open as people feel comfortable to, to tell their stories. As the county clerk, I am the keeper of the records for the county. As part of that official role, I handle the county archives, where we have millions of historical records. And as the keeper of the record, it is important to me to preserve this time period, this moment in time. What they witnessed, what they saw, what they felt, should be documented so that we understand how to prevent something like that from happening in the future. And I'm not talking about from a security perspective, I'm talking about from a human perspective. I believe it's so important in, in all of our lives to remember not just the individuals who perished that day, but also just from a historical perspective to really know what has happened in our history and how it affects our daily life. I think about the quote from Maya Angelou, you can't really know where you're going unless you know where you've been. And it's really important to reflect on our history, whether it's good or bad, to really inform us in the decisions we make going forward. And the reality is that, you know, there's kids in college that were not alive then. And so it's, it's important to teach them. It's important for them to know. For me, it's always a living history, that's for sure.